What we hear also is that there's another pernicious element, and the thing we have to stop in these countries is, is a thing called communism, and that there are communists in these countries. It's time, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, it's time we ask, what's a communist? What does a communist do that is so dangerous? They would have us believe that communists merely hunger for power rather than wanting the power to end hunger. They would have us believe, uh, well, the New York Times, let me, let, me, let me refer to an editorial where they describe the undesirable and offensive Managua regime. By the way, these countries don't have governments, they have regimes. You'll see that in the newspapers all the time. We have government. Um, and I said to myself, what is undesirable and offensive about Managua? Is it the land reform program? Where they took all that massive land owned by those few rich compradors and, and gave it out to the people who were starved for land? Is it the farm co-ops that they're setting up? Is it the community industries and the public work programs to create jobs for people who have been chronically unemployed? Is it the food program, a ration of beans and rice for every kid in Nicaragua so that nobody, no matter how poor that country is, they're all getting fed? Is it having the lowest infant mortality rate in Central America despite earthquake and civil war and foreign invasion and attack and embargo? Lower even than Costa Rica, which is supposed to be the big show place? What's so offensive about Managua? It is those things in some degree. It is creating a competing social order. It is people, it is those who have been downtrodden, it has been those who have been used as fodder in the capital accumulation process, now claiming back the process of production, claiming back their own land, claiming back their own flag, their own dignity, and saying, this country is going to be for us and not for you anymore, gringo. And that's the communist program, and that's what communists are. I had somebody up in Vermont say, she got up, and she was one of those trust funders who works on peace a lot, and she said, oh, sorry there. <laughs> she said, um, people were saying that the Salvadoran guerrillas are communists, but they're not communists. They're just ordinary peasants. So why are we fighting them? The implication being that if they were communists, it would be okay to go in and pulverize them. <laughs> and I pointed out that, well, look, at least in the FLM and the front, there's at least two of those five groups, at least two, I, I, I'm not sure about all of them, but at least two of them that would not deny the label communist. They would say, yo soy comunista, you know, uh, they'd say it. Um, and they would say it proudly. And what does it mean to be a communist? It means to fight and devote yourself to the people. If communists, if we leftists, if we Marxists, if we revolutionaries, if we progressives, if we all we want is to hunger for power, then why do we side with the powerless? Then why don't we toady up to power? Why don't we take the road of the Henry Kissingers and the Patrick, Daniel Patrick Moynihan's and the Ziggy Brzezinski's and the Eugene Rostow's and the McGeorge Bundy's who toady up and mouth for power. When Henry Kissinger was made national security advisor for Richard Nixon, Nelson Rockefeller gave him 50,000 bucks as a going away present. <clears throat> as Nelson Rockefeller testified himself before the Senate committee when he was being appointed vice president of the United States. And they asked, and the senators, well, they really went at Rockefeller really hard. They said, um, uh, why, why'd you do that, uh, Mr. Rockefeller? <laughs> And Rockefeller said, well, giving's always been a tradition in our family. <laughs> giving. They cast their bread upon the waters and more and more came back, didn't it? He was saying to Henry Kissinger, Henry, I brought you out of Harvard. I brought you out of that center for, or whatever that was, strategic studies, because uh, I like the books you were writing and you were writing them for me. Henry, you remember, you're going to go work for Tricky Dick, but you remember who you belong to. And that's what, that's what hungering for power is. It's climbing like the political climbers and careers have done in every country in the world. 
And we on the left don't do that. We stand out in the rain. We stand out on the picket line. We put our jobs on the line. We risk our careers. In many cases, we even risk our physical safety and our lives in all sorts of countries. If it's power we want, why do we take such a circuitous route? If it's power Senator Garland wants, why is he standing back there? In 70 years, standing like a legion. <clears throat> well, these communists do do all these reform things, yes. And liberal columnist Richard Cohn in the Washington Post says, uh, and I think I've heard it about 800 times from different people, we ought to copy what the communists do. Why are we always on the wrong side? Why do we go into these countries and find ourselves on the side of the big landowners, the sweatshop owners, the, the big corrupt generals who run little prostitution rackets on the side and all that stuff? Then why are we with that element? Why aren't we... Why don't we capture the hearts and minds of the people the way the communists do? Why don't we copy their techniques? What are their techniques? Well, communist techniques are very well known. Just the things we just said. They go into the village. They do land reform. They try to bring clean drinking water. They pay for the food they take. They try to help the people organize themselves. That's what they do. But if we did those things, we not only would have stolen their program, we would have been, become them. Because that's what they were doing. That's the thing we're fighting to prevent. Not we. That's what our government and our ruling class is fighting to prevent. That's why we always go in on the wrong side, because the wrong side is the right side for the class interests of this administration and, just, and every other administration that's occupied the White House. 